Good afternoon, friends. Welcome back to the channel. It's a beautiful day here on the homestead. And uh, today, today's project is resuming the construction of the chicken coop that I started back in January before the cold set in. So what I've got here is a 10 by 15 frame. Uh, the open run area is uh, 10 by 10 with a storage area that is 10 by 5. The, the 10 by 5 area is going to be traditional stick framing, uh, probably 16 or maybe even 24 inch on centers just because I want to put a window on the west side there. And then this will be uh, pole barn style framing over here. Uh, and they'll all tie together appropriately. It'll look nice and, and, and be nice in the end. Um, each corner, the four corners, have uh, concrete poured at three foot deep. They have uh, concrete anchors on there for the posts. And it'll be nice to be able to get that support there. The, the two west posts are going to stay there. They're not going to move. I'm going to be putting over here in this area here. There's going to be uh, four by fours right here and right here, as is over here in this corner. It's four by fours. It's going to be eight foot tall in the front, tapered down to seven foot tall in the back, with hopefully uh, metal roofing. If I don't get metal roofing, I'll just get some shingles. Shingles are fairly cheap compared to metal right now. And everything I'm going to be using uh, with just bare, you know regular pine material is going to be refurbished, repurposed material for my construction of the house. Uh, all the treated lumber on the other hand has, has been purchased uh, locally and the reason why I wanted that is because it's ground contact material and I didn't have any treated lumber on hand so unfortunately this thing will not be one of those cheap hundred dollar refurbished builds but it'll be a couple hundred dollars. All right so here is the two by material and the four buys that I bought this morning, but the two by material I am repurposing from the construction of my home. Um, these were there on site holding things down and they're just, you know, place keepers basically and they're nail riddled like crazy. So I'll have to remove all those nails of course, but it's gonna be nice because that's saving me hundreds of dollars. Um, heck, these four, uh, four by fours that are eight foot long, they were $17 a piece. Uh, locally and that's not a big deal I don't mind paying local prices but in this whole project this amount of material can get very expensive and this isn't going to be a cheap a cheap you know looking build I want it to look nice but I'm going to repurpose what I can for what it's worth so I've got a 10 by 10 structure it will be an 8 footer 8 footer here and then these will be 7 foot 4 by 4s and then uh, horizontally there will be 3 sides of 2 by's that are going to be at two foot intervals all the way up. And then where the roof is going to attach will be uh, set appropriately to that. So I'm not gonna do any time lapse or major videos during this because I don't have the time to stop and record and do the Wrangler Star type video. So I'm gonna get going and we'll see what happens. All right guys, so here we are two and a half hours later. I had two hours with the work and 30 minute lunch break and the wind's picked up since then. So we've got three sides of the chicken coop done. I called my local hardware stores just to get a price uh, comparison and a, approximate for the material. And basically a 10 foot two by four right now is anywhere from eight to $10. And I've got dozens, dozens of these two by fours around here that I'm gonna be saving a lot of money on because right now I've got nine boards on which means it's gonna save me $90 just this alone. And then I'll have three more on top, so that's 120 bucks I'm saving just in two by four material, or go two by four pine material. No, no fault of their own, it's just the market's that way right now. And so my plan is, since I had to drop my two by fours, or my four by fours down into the two by fours, three and a half inches to get the support I needed to my anchors, uh, I've got basically seven foot six from the top of the bottom two by four up to the top. So seven foot six in the front and seven foot from the bottom of the top in the rear. And that'll let me six inches of drop for the uh, watershed. So basically I'm gonna have uh, from the front seven foot six and then on the back side of the chicken coop on the chicken run will be six foot. And so I'll get a foot and a half, basically 18 inches of waterfall shedding and uh, into water buckets or water containment systems to water the chickens in my garden and everything else. So that'll be nice. Um, basically, I gotta get my two bys all figured out and denailed and applied up here before I can top my, chop my uh, 4x4s up. And I will see what it looks like very soon. I'm gonna start uh, organizing material for my 
my uh, studded wall over here for my storage room, which I don't need to do studded wall. I could do this barn style uh, stuff there, but because I'm gonna have a door right here, that make it a lot easier to put a put a door in place. Well, guys, a quick pause in the video here. Uh, we've had some moisture, and this old pond here. This is the old uh, windmill driven water well or tension pond. The water well used to sit right up there next to my backhoe. This pond has been up to this level here twice in the last week. And so much so that we've, you know, I've got a lot of drainage I have to deal with here. And luckily one of the local uh, farm supply stores had a middle buster on sale. And I happened to be at the store when I saw it. And so I picked up the middle buster and the middle buster is good for gardening, but it's also good for this right here, digging a little trench. And I dug several trenches to go out and around the chicken coop because we had, well, I went to bed Saturday evening. We had like 2.9, maybe three inches of rain. Woke up Saturday or Sunday morning and it said we had 10 inches of rain. I don't believe it, uh, but I do know that Saturday, the chicken coop in here, this open spot where the, or the chickens will, re uh, the roost will be, was full of water. And uh, it was overflowing. So that's how, I mean, I got it all sealed up around the edge with dirt, but it was pooling in there. And so then I came over here. And I had to dig a little trench and drain it out underneath there. And then it just made its own way all the way down. Kind of crazy. So, still extremely muddy out here. Thankful for these old uh, muck boots. You know, rubber boots work too, but yeah, that's where that went. Look at that. I'm gonna go ahead and pull nails for the, the boards on this back wall, and then I'll probably get the front done. I don't think I have enough for my rafters, so I'll probably have to go buy some uh, 10 footers for that, unfortunately. But I'll explain what I'm doing here. These are gonna, gonna, these are gonna come off. And I'll explain why uh, in another video. Well, in, in the same video, probably, maybe a part two, but I'm gonna do something a little different, a different construction method than what I wanted to do originally. So let's go ahead and start pulling nails and get that wall built. these are about seven foot six which will work perfectly for my walls because they're not eight footers the front of my wall is seven six and the rear is seven foot it sucks to have to pull all these nails but what sucks even more is having to waste the wood. I'll tell you what, you know, years back, hell, even 12 months ago, you know, just before CV19 came in, I would have said, screw all these nails, burn the wood. That's good firewood, right? As with everything with CV19. As with everything with uh, CV19, price of lumber went up. You know, price of ammunition went up. Lumber still in the stores, unlike ammunition. But uh, the difference is. You may need ammunition. You don't need lumber all the time. I'm just doing this because I need, you know, to continue my homesteading part of my life. This is what I'm doing now. This is, the homestead life is life for me. And while I'm doing it in a different manner than most people, I mean, I'm starting off fresh. 
with tools that a lot of people would start off with not having a tractor the appropriate woodworking tools fresh ground fresh ideas it's also going to suck about this wood is that it's been out in the rain we've got we had six days or, or four days of rain i think as it was at least on and off over four days official count i have no idea what the official numbers were my rain gauge was a little bit off. I know at least he had an inch and a half, two inches minimum. It was called for. Seven footers, if they're eight footers, that's six, seven dollars a board right there. So that's gonna be nice. Save that money, guys. Save the money. Find, you need to salvage what you can. I mean, so many people want to buy new, which, I, of course, I always like buying new material. But if I have the option to repurpose stuff, not only is it saving the environment, it's repurposing it, uh, but it's, there's, there's so many things you can, you can build on repurposed material. All right, so my, my wall in the back, on the back side is 83 inches tall, which means my studs need to be 80 inches because I have inch and a half top and bottom plate. Uh, but I do have a four degree incline I'm accounting for. So I'm cutting my studs at 80 and one quarter inches with that four degrees and putting the 80 inch cut on the back side. A lot of this wood is not the greatest. It's gonna be interesting because it is a little wet for me outside. All while keeping mind of horrible deficiencies in this wood, structurally and visually. Piece. It's broken off. I actually just used the uh, mail end of it. It was a 16 foot board they cut or it split in two. All right. Scrap your firewood. This one has a nasty little knot here. Won't be a big deal, but. I'll put that on the outside. All right, this is the last one for my stud on the rear wall. Right into a knot. All right, so I have everything laid out here with a semi, semi clean floor underneath it. I have constructed everything thus far using uh, exterior grade screws, but that was with dry wood. And then even then, my screws were, were boring themselves out of the wood. Usually you go, you know, across the grain, the end grain is gonna bore itself out anyways. So I'm gonna use some three and a quarter inch uh, construction nails, of course. I'm gonna do the bottom plate, square it up as best as possible. This doesn't have to be 100% perfect because these boards aren't perfect. I can do a lot of uh, manipulation while it's in place. Bit. 
these uh, the Walt brushless nailers are amazing. No air, no gas, nothing to deal with. The industry is really picking up on technology for sure. But again, you're not using a square anywhere. My eyeball are just as good as a square, and all three of those are squares can be. So is that. Now, because this is such a small wall, it's not going to make a big difference in everything. I can't even get that on there. Oh, I'm drowning off this one. You got 108. And my wall cavity this is going to go into isn't quite square anyways, on purpose. 100 and a quarter. Not too bad. Right, I got to take the support board up. This, uh, this board was to keep this wall in place. We had some crazy winds when I was putting this wall here up. It just started raining and the ground wasn't soft or was uh, still a little wet yet to uh, put a support leg out and only. So I put a little brace up. All right, let's go ahead and get that wall on the other side. I measured once, I measured twice to see if we did it right the first time. Small cavity to fit into. Be myself about three sixteenths on both sides. Wasn't quite enough, was it, Ian? Oh, I forgot the bottom. Oh, this actually has to go over just here. Oh, there we go. It's kicking in. I have to contend with the different things here, top and bottom. Oh, you know what happens? It, the material I'm using. Well, what I'm throwing it into and everything is really yet a little swollen, maybe. A little bit outside, of course. It's pretty straight there. A little high over here in this corner, but not a big deal. I can adjust for that. And my top. Things happen. Things happen. Let's see if we're square up and down. Guys, I'm not gonna claim to be a professional builder, but by golly, I think I know what I'm doing. Mine's this 3 16th up here, but that could, I don't know, maybe some dirt underneath there, I don't know. Not a big deal. This is flush. Good deal. Good deal, good deal. Make sure we're good here. aren't straight to begin with they've been outside for nine months that'll suck up there we go guys there we go let's go ahead and get some screws in this and get it set now i could be using my nailer uh the problem is I like the screws a lot better. Obviously the shear strength is not there. Compared to nails. But uh I don't know. I just like the simplicity of a screw holding things together.
one beautiful wall for these chickens. What a man does for his chickens. And I guess if uh, we don't get chickens, this could be my man cave slash dog house slash storage. I don't know. I'm gonna go ahead and get this wall on this side over here put together. So the camera's nearly dead, so I have to make this as, a, as quick as I can, finish this video up today. This wall right here is gonna wait until my sighting's here. Uh, it just showed up at the uh, at the store, so I'm gonna go to town and get it here pretty soon. Get some 10 footers for my rafters. I have a, a two by that's gonna go right here in the front and in the rear. That is what my rafters are going to hang on. Um, and then I'm going to sight it. These pieces that are hanging over on all four sides are gonna come off. And those will uh, be replaced by whatever I make in the end. So what I'm, my plans are, are to make a 16 inch overhang all the way around the outside. So the front, the sides, and the back. And back here, I'm gonna have the 10 foot wide by 15 foot chicken coop, or chicken run, sorry. That's gonna go on this little peninsula here. So this wall is gonna go in, it's gonna go uh, two and a half foot over, and then that chicken run is gonna be out here. So my overhang is gonna be only two and a half foot over to here, and here's my mark. So it's gonna come over to here, and then the roof will go ahead and taper out from there, as it will from, I think it's here, no, here. This stud, I think, is what I marked it out to be. So the same thing, the chicken run will come from here on out. That'd be kind of offset on my room and the the roost. So I'm standing in the the, the uh, chicken run right now. Little uh, little too much maybe. It's fairly large for a chicken for a chicken coop. Um, 150 square foot guys. And from what I've read, and the experts have told me. I think you need one to four square foot per chicken. So if you do that math, I can have a bunch of chickens in here. I'm definitely not gonna have all those chickens, but we'll do what we can. So anyways, keep calm and carry on, stay safe, and I'll see you on the next one.